my name is Han Kim, the associate pastor of this church. I'm so happy to meet you again in this beautiful morning. And also welcome to our first indoor worship service. Yeah, technically this is not the first indoor worship service for you, but I mean after this pandemic, we finally meet up in this beautiful sanctuary. So most of all, first of all, I want to uh, let us praise the Lord by waving our bullets first. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, let me share some announcements before we begin. Please keep wearing your mask during the whole worship service. Yeah, I know how much it is inconvenient, but thanks for your cooperation and consideration. And one thing that I have to ask for your understanding is that during the whole worship service, Pastor Sarah and I will lead the worship service yeah, by wearing the mask on in the sanctuary. Even though it is harder to deliver a clear message, yeah, but it will be better to keep, keep us safe and strength. So thank you for your understanding in, in advance. Our gifted musician Christine will be providing both music and song, but we will not be singing together. But don't be sad, humming is always welcome. So do not do not stop. Yeah. Singing. Please uh, keep humming without ceasing. Okay. <laughs> and our next sermon series called How Did We Get Here will start next Sunday and go on till the first week of November. Last but not least, Reverend Dr. Jennifer Joe visit our church today. Yeah, she is a senior pastor of Bridgewater UMC and also my Kent so, so why don't you wave me our bullion to welcome her? <laughs> she will preside today's Holy Communion as well for us. Thank you for the coming, visiting, and presiding our Holy Communion. Okay, are there another announcements that we want to lift up this morning? Okay, so let me invite today's Ray Reader talk to invite you to call to worship. If you are able, could you please rise for the call to worship? Come, let us worship God who provides for us. Even though we lie and complain, God hears our cries. Lift your voices in praise, for God has come to comfort you. And I can see God who forgives and heals our wounded souls. Come, celebrate God's steadfast love. Open our hearts, O Lord, and let us truly listen to your words. Amen. Please be seated. We will now hear God, how can we forgive by Christmas? Thank you.
Will you please turn in your bulletin for the opening prayer and join me in unison? Lord, who lifts us up, reside in our hearts today. Help us to listen closely for your word to us. Remind us that you are always with us throughout all our lives. Give us confidence in your presence so that we may go into your world ready to witness to your love through our works and our deeds. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Now let me, let us hear our celebration. This time is for someone who has birthday or anniversary in this week. Or someone who just wants to any kind of blessing have. So is there someone who has birthday or anniversary? Okay, yeah. if so, I just want to bless for everyone through this time. Is it okay? Okay, let us pray. Life giving God, thank you so much for giving us this time to celebrate each other and love each other and pray for each other. You have given us health and strength, friends and relatives, enjoyment and pleasures. And above all, your gospel with its many promises of peace and forgiveness. Our grateful hearts praise you. Be always with us and fill us with your love, peace, and grace. Spirit of power and goodness, quiet our minds. Help us to be still enough to hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this is time to share today's children's message. Yeah, even though um, we don't have any children today, but I believe over the screen, beyond the screen, there must be our children so that it is enough to share. Uh, it is yeah, enough reason to share today's children's message with you. Okay, this morning's scripture lesson for children's message is from Mark chapter 18, verse 1. Mark chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus told his disciples a story. He wanted to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I'm going to read it again because it's just really short. He just told his disciples a story he wanted to show them that they should always pray and not evil. Amen. Look what I have today. Does anyone know what these are? Yeah, binoculars, that's right. So it is, these are binoculars and it is, these are used for looking at something far away. So through these binoculars, yeah, <laughs> through these binoculars, <laughs> even even I can see Ben who is videotaping on the balcony. Hello, Ben. Hello there. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. Too. You're behind the chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So, anyway, anyway, I really love this tool, and I use this for um, loop. Uh, when I go to outside to have bird watching. Did you have, uh, have you ever tried bird watching? Yes? No? Uh, some, of, some of you. So, bird watching is one of my favorite hobbies yeah, on my whole life. So, when I want to go outside to bird watching, I picked up my binoculars and tried to look uh, slowly look around in the sky. Through this bird watching, I can see so many beautiful birds, especially the eagle, my favorite bird. Anyway, but sometimes I can see uh, what I want right away, but sometimes I have to spend 
so much time to find a beautiful bird. I have to wait. I have to be patient. I have to uh, not give up. That's why I usually make a cup of tea and sit in chair and then wait and watch. So through this bird watch, bird watching, um, I can see uh, many of beautiful birds. But sometimes I don't see my eagle, but do see some another, some other beautiful birds that I didn't expect. But one thing that the one thing that is really important is we have to wait, we have to be patient, we have to not give up to watch, to find beautiful birds. The reason, the reason that I'm telling you this story is in today's Bible lesson, Jesus tells his disciples they should always pray and not give up. They should always pray and not give up. If you want to pray, you should always wait and be patient and not give up. We don't want to give up. And Jesus wants us to keep talking, keep praying to Him. Even if our uh, answers, our, our prayer um, are not answered right, right in a way. So even if our prayer are answered in the way that we didn't expect. So keep in mind, if you want to, if you want to pray to God, Please wait, and please be patient, and please not give up. This is the word of God that God gave us this morning. Let us pray. Dear God, we know that you can hear us when we pray. When there is something, we are asking for help us not to give up, but to keep on praying. We know that you love us and will answer our prayers in your time and in the way that is best for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The first scripture lesson comes to us from Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 1 through 9. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish it in a day? Can they bring the stones back to light from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What they are building, even a fox climbing up on it, would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give their Give them over as plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half the height, for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. This is the word of God. The gospel lesson for this morning is from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 42. The gospel of Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 
42. Listen to the word of the Lord. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, See, here, why are I praying? He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it is were possible, the hour might pass for him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they didn't know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Get up. Let us be gone. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. My first sermon series that I shared with you was about prayer. Whether you remember it or not, I did. <laughs> Through the sermon series, I encourage all of you to be a prayer community, to be a praying church that Jesus wanted to establish. The praying church is the living church, and the living church will transform the world. Amen? Amen. But I don't want to make you misunderstand that praying is the only one thing that you have to do. As I mentioned, according to James 2.14, faith without works is dead. White prayers should be followed by white actions. Today, I want to invite you to talk about more in, through today's sermon, a magic spell. Have you ever imagined having a special ability that enables you to have what you really want suddenly appear without any effort? Sometimes I have imagined that. Actually, I still want that special ability. I want to have delicious food suddenly appear for me to eat, and I want to have paperwork finished automatically without any effort. It's like magic, right? But to use magic, we need a spell to be cast over us. Have you ever watched the movie Harry Potter? Yes? No? Yeah. There are lots of spells such as Wingardium Levisa or Expecto Patronum, which is the spell that gets rid of pesky dementors by summoning Patronum. A patronum is a kind of figure chasing them away. I think some of them, some of you are unfamiliar with this movie. If so, how about Cinderella? Salaka Dula, Mexica Bula. Yeah, that's right. It's better. It's better. Okay. In the movie Cinderella, the fairy changed a pumpkin into a beautiful coach. And also, the fairy changed also mice into gorgeous white horses by singing this spell. Salaka Dula, Mexica Bula. A magic spell makes anything or everything that we wish for happen. The magic spell fulfills anything or everything that we want. But you know what? If you believe it or not, sometimes, sometimes, we regard prayer to be like a magic spell. What do I mean? Sometimes we think like this. 
If I pray to God, God will realize anything that I wish for. God will fulfill every proposal or plan that I have. And if my wishes were not realized or didn't come true, we blame God. Hey God, why don't you respond to my prayer? Why don't you listen to my prayer? Are you listening to my voice? Are you there? Please look, please look back on your life when you pray. Are you praying to God or are you casting a spell to God? Our prayer is not about a magic spell which is notifying unilaterally what you want to God. The prayer must be supported by right actions. In today's first spiritual lesson, Nehemiah is building the war, which is a part of God's temple. At the time, enemies heard that and wanted to interrupt him. The enemies said, What are you what are you building, Nehemiah? Are you rebuilding the war? If even a fox climbed up on it, the fox would break down the war of horns. Nehemiah was mocked by enemies. But he kept rebuilding the war, and all of the Israelites worked together with all their hearts. Rebuilding the war was going as planned. The enemies worried about that and said they might completely rebuild the war. So they plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem where the Israelites were rebuilding the war. They conspired to stir up trouble against it. Even though Nehemiah noticed that only half of the war was completed, so Nehemiah planned a strategy which included both rebuilding the war and defending the war at the same time. Nehemiah 4 9 says, So we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. Nehemiah didn't only pray when he was in the trouble thinking that the enemies planned to attack the war. Of course he prayed to God. At the same time, however, he also made effort, made sure the war was defended. He placed guards there and left and let the people walk wearing a sword and let them have a weapon even when they went for water. Nehemiah performed all the right action with prayer. For Christians, for all believers, Prayer, prayer is really, really important in our lives. But only praying is ridiculous. Someone prayed to God, Dear God, I plan to lose my weight. Please help me. After praying, he or she went to Baskin Robbins and ate a half gallon ice cream of corn <laughs> and said, Hey God, why don't you answer my prayer? Why don't you show me the right way? I prayed a thousand times, but nothing has changed. If so, God might say to him or her like this, Hey, 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 you didn't do anything for your prayer. Is prayer a magic spell? Did you use the magic spell for what you wanted to? If you want to pray to God, you must also be sure to complete the right action together, as Nehemiah did. If you carry out the right action with prayer, God will answer to your prayer. Interestingly, however, God always answers to our prayer whether we recognize what God's answer is or not. We don't recognize that fact because sometimes the answer is not the one that we actually hoped for. God gives us three types of answers. Firstly, there is yes. If your prayer is in God's will, God will answer you immediately. Secondly, there is another answer, is no. 
But if your prayer is not in God's will, God's plan, God will not answer you forever. Hey, 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 Pastor Han, how the answer no could be one of God's answers? No means not responded, isn't it? Do you think so? But we already read today's gospel lesson, the story of Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. Before Jesus died upon the cross, he went to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus, Jesus began to be sorrowful and troubled. He fell with his face to the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what, not what I want, but what you want. What was the answer of God for Jesus' prayer? Yes. Did he get up from the crucifixion? What God answered to Jesus was nothing. Even the answer was not no, but nothing. Eventually, Jesus died upon the cross to save us from our sins. Consequently, we can guess that God's answer to Jesus' prayer was no. Please keep in mind, even Jesus, Son of God, had the answer no from God. This is because God's will, God's plan, was different with Jesus' prayer. That's why God didn't remove the cup from him. Therefore, the answer no could be one of God's answers. Finally, even though your prayer is in God's will, if it is not in God's time, God would give you another answer. Wait. It means that God will give you the answer yes, but not now. We need to wait until when God's time is right, like when we have to wait a while to find a beautiful bird. We have to be patient, not give up, and keep praying. However, not only pray, but do right actions with your prayer as they might it. Among computer science acronyms, there are there is G-I-G-O called GIGO or GIGO. That stands for garbage in, garbage out. It implies that bad input will result in bad output. No matter how good your computer is, if you enter incorrect information, it can lead to incorrect results. All of us are good creatures that God has made. But if you enter an incorrect prayer which is different with God's will, it will lead to incorrect actions. We should pray correctly by following God's will. To follow God's will, first of all, we should pray to ask what God's will is in our life. Then we can focus on the prayer and we can find the right actions. If you pray, good and gracious God, please help me to love my neighbor as myself. You should, you should try to follow the prayer with the action. If you pray so, you can start from the small actions. For example, you should love your family first. You cannot love your neighbor without loving your family. Or, when you drive, do not show your anger to those who cross over into your lane. <laughs> That's not the way to love your neighbors. Or, Preparing something to share with your neighbor is also a good way to love them. I noticed that a big green box for the food pantry is over there. And now, until this morning, it's empty. So we can resume collecting canned foods or non-perishable goods for our neighbors. And it will be a good way of the right action of loving them. Okay, how many type how many types of God's answer have we talked about this morning? Three. Three. And what were those? Yes. No. And great. Great job. 
Keep it in mind, God always listens to your prayer and always answers your prayer, whether that is what you wish for or not. Prayer is not a magic spell. Most of all, pray for what God wants to do through your life. I hope you and I always remember Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And combine prayer with right action. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Keeping today's message in mind, let us sing, take time to be holy. You and him now 395. You and him now 395.
Jordan could be the one and keep praying for Bob and his family. His family. Okay. I had a beautiful time with same problem with grandchildren uh, in, who live in Texas and they have no religious life to speak of and their grandfather died and on the other side of the family and they had no support you know there, there is no way uh, I was the same age when my grandfather died and I remember going to church and uh, choir practice and praying uh, but they don't have that. And all they did was cry for two days. I have one joy and one concern that I want to share with you. Um, one of my colleagues, Reverend Juha Lee passed away last night. He is a missionary and he is in, was in Indonesia. <coughs> he, he died due to the many meningitis. So please keep praying for him and his family members. He has yeah, three young children, three boys. I think they need our prayer. And also, let me share one of my joys to worship the Lord in the Lord. Many people, uh, faithful members, prepared uh, this worship service. Uh, most of all, today's ushers, um, Judy and Chuck, thank you for your time, thank you for your concern. And also, I want to thank you again for serving as a video backward with your own device. So, thank you so much. Okay, is there another joy or concerns? If so, let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for giving us this wonderful day, wonderful church, and wonderful sisters and brothers. Everything that you have given us is wonderful. You are always wonderful for us. Today we share our joys and concerns with one another. There are many people who need our prayer. Please help us to keep praying for them without ceasing. Our third phase message, we confess, we regarded prayer to be like a magic spell. We pastor you with what I want and blamed you when we thought you didn't answer us. But now we know that you always listen our prayer and try to answer us. Almighty God, please help us to believe you more than anything and to combine prayer with right action. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During this pandemic, we will not pass the offering plates. The plate is over there, so you can put your offering. Now, let's sing Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You have him now, nine 
94, we are in now 94, 94. Let's sing together by looking at chords. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me well? Yes. yes. All right. It is so good to see you this morning, and I um, greet you in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. You probably wonder, why am I doing here? <laughs> because I'm the senior pastor of Bridgewater United Methodist Church. Today is my day off. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked my associate pastor to preach, and we had an uh, outdoor service 9 o'clock. Our church um, is going to have indoor service starting October 25th, so um, they had a good service. Today I'm here to see you and say hello to you and celebrate this beautiful day with you. Also, I'd like to see my most beloved mentee. Reverend Han, uh, just to celebrate his ministry here in Sergeantville. So thank you for welcoming me and invite me into this space. And it was so wonderful to have you especially celebrate your first indoor service. And some of you said, you know, you didn't have an Easter service here. Same here. We didn't celebrate Easter in our sanctuary. So this is a very, very emotional Sunday for a lot of us. So. But today is World Communion Sunday. Millions of Christians around the globe, they celebrate this Sunday and lift up prayers and also do one of the most crucial parts of the worship service, that is Holy Communion. So let us celebrate our Holy Communion time together. Receive a holy meal um, Jesus prepared for us. So today, we all receive this individually wrapped um, Holy Communion set, right? So this is mostly recommended for all churches. So you don't have to stand, you don't have to do intention, or you don't, you don't have to provide a serve you. So here, um, this is the gluten-free. So anybody is gluten-free is fine. And here's a cup, and on the other side, there's a little uh, piece of wafer, okay? So at the time that we receive Holy Meal together, you open this, and then you take the piece of wafer, and then you open the cup, and then we'll drink it together, okay? And then you can dispose it 
when you go out to the sanctuary. All right? Wonderful. So this table is ready for us. This is the table of forgiveness, love, hope, joy, and peace. So anybody would like to reconcile with God and anyone who confess the Lord is your Savior are invited to this table. So please be ready to read this invitation and thanksgiving liturgy and ready to receive Holy Meal together. So you have an insert already right here. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us join confession and pardon together. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with all heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our ears. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth, all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy Spirit on us gather here on these gifts 
of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory as we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me the closing prayer. Lord Jesus, and partake your body and blood in remembrance of your anointing sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for dying for me on the cross and paying an enormous price for my sins so that I may be forgiven of all my sins and receive your dwelling life. May I never forget the enormous price that we pay on behalf. May I never forget that I have been bought of Christ and precious blood of Lord Jesus. May I live for him from this day on, knowing that your body was broken and your blood was spilled for me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us 
sin, face closing him, standing on the promises. You have him now 3, 74. You have him now 3, 74. <laughs> Thank you. 